and welcome to my session. My name is uh, Albin Lotrich. I'm from Docentric, and actually I'm a senior technical consultant. And today I'm going to present you electronic reporting and business documents for beginners. So this session is intended for people who either tried electronic reporting and business documents, but gave up due to its complexity or lack of materials, but also have interest in this technology, don't really know where to start. So uh, unfortunately, we don't really have much time today, but I'll still try to give you many useful content. Our team at Decentric has been following this technology for two years now, since it was published in June 2019. And there was and still is a little documentation. So we started to publish our own, which we will gladly share with the community. And by clicking the link that you see on the slide, you will get quite a bit of very useful electronic reporting related content. Now, okay, um, I'm going to joke a little bit here. Uh, who are ideal candidates for electronic reporting and business documents? Official documentation says functional consultants and power users, but I say also people with quite a bit of time and some good nerves, because it really takes quite a bit of uh, experimenting, getting uh, to the end with this technology. Also, teamwork helps uh, quite a bit. For example, this morning, I was still struggling with preparing the template for this uh, presentation. Even after two years working with this technology, still I need to call two friends of mine to help me, two of my colleagues very experienced in this. And together we tamed this uh, template. Actually, it was not really free for me. I had to, uh, I owe them two drinks now. But anyways, at the end, we made this uh, work so that we will be able to finish this presentation. Hopefully we're going to get through, okay. You know, with um, electronic reporting and business documents, it is always so that it is an adventure because you never know when you're really going to end. Hopefully everything is going to work well today. And uh, let's see uh, what is there for us in our agenda. So first of all, I'm going to explain what electronic reporting is and what business documents are, sometimes referred to as configurable business documents. I'll show you where to get ready-made configurations and once imported, these configurations can be used in print management. I'll show you how you can do that. I'll also explain what the configurations are because they are the heart and soul of electronic reporting. And of course, if you are interested in this technology, probably you want to design and modify reports yourself. So I'm going to show you how to derive and modify the configurations. That's something that can really be uh, quite uh, difficult and complex. So I'll try to give you some tips to avoid that. And at the end, as much time as we will have, we will still then see some uh, of the uh, things wrapped up in a summary. Okay, without further ado, let's start with this topic, with the topics from our agenda. So what is electronic reporting? First of all, this is no code, no code reporting tool. It's targeted at people who are dealing with reports uh, to be able to design them, to be able to uh, choose which data they want to use. Electronic reporting by itself is not new. It actually was already used in business to garment reporting and business to business reporting. But uh, of course, there is a no code approach and everything depends on configurations. Now, what are business documents? Business documents are an addition on top of electronic reporting. In electronic reporting, we have data model. So data model is the heart of everything. We set the structure, the data structure there, and then we pick in the mapping which data from the data sources we're going to use. And we're not limited only to the fields uh, in the data tables. We also can use uh, aggregations. We can use uh, different uh, data structures available in different 65 FO. So we're pretty flexible there. And then the formats. Formats actually uh, define the documents. And basically this is what business documents really are. So individual documents, including the templates in Excel or Word, which can then consume the data available in the data model. So for example, in the invoice, 
we can then bind any kind of invoice to this data. So invoice is the superset of all the data available for invoices, and then individual invoices just take the subsets of this data. So we have one invoice data model, but we have several different uh, invoice formats. Okay, then to some practical things, how to download and import configurations. We'll see all that in the demo later on, I will show you. But now we'll just go through it quickly to see where to start and what we can get and what to expect. Uh, you might make your configurations from scratch, but nobody in his or her right mind would do so because we already have tons of configurations readily prepared by Microsoft. And uh, we can get them in several different ways. I think that the beginner would probably find it easiest to simply go from the lifecycle services, LCS for short, under shared asset library, and there are so-called JIR configurations. So you can see these JIR configurations. Uh, and from there, you can download them, and then you can load them into different 65 fo as individual configurations. So that is what you would typically do. And then once you have it uh, downloaded in Different 65 FO and ready to go, you can use them for reports. Set up print management, we'll see how to do it. And then we can also set the destination where we want to see it. By the way, electronic reporting is not using the same print destinations as we know from SSRS. It uses its own so-called electronic reporting destinations. And we can set where do we want to uh, set those. And then we print just as usual using print management. And as a result, we are getting the documents generated by electronic reporting from the templates in electronic reporting formats. So we'll see that practically as well. And then explanation of configuration. This is something that's also quite important. Configuration, as I said, are the heart and soul of electronic reporting. We'll discuss the data model, model mapping, and format in very short um, time, just to give you the basics so that you'll understand what to expect where and how to work with them. And of course, the most interesting part comes afterwards when we will see in a live demo how to derive an existing configuration, how to modify it, and do something else. To get out with something hopefully not upside down as this guy did with this car, but something more useful. So uh, we'll do in the node code way, that's true, but it's not really simple. You'll see there is quite a bit of complexity. And as I said in the beginning, I'm not really right, uh, quite sure, am I going to make everything smoothly because electronic reporting may surprise you with some weird things, weird behaviors, and then you sort of scratch your head and try to figure out what's wrong and just repeat and repeat until you get over with the working version. Good. So without further ado, now let's shift over to the 65 fo and let's see in real life how these things look like. Okay, I mentioned that the easiest way to get our um, configurations is from shared asset library in LCS. And I have already prepared a list of uh, configurations. Uh, by the way, this shared asset library contains quite a bit of, of that. Okay, I have to do it once again. Uh, there are currently, I think, 3,500 configurations in JIR configurations. Now, what does JIR stands for? Uh, GAR means General Electronic Reporting Configurations. These are all configurations provided by Microsoft. As I said, 3,500 and something and they keep adding them on a daily basis, literally. We will see once we uh, see the list of all these configurations that uh, there are really lots, lots of them. And then you, we can scroll through these configurations. They are in chronological order and you can see that practically they are being added daily. Now, uh, we have to find uh, the configurations and basically first we need to find for the last data model. And from the data model, we then search for the next uh, newer data model uh, mapping and then uh, to the newer format. And I have already picked uh, those up here. So in July 
of this year, uh, they created the latest invoice model. This is version 252. And then next to it is also invoice model mapping version 252. And then it has a sub version uh, 207. But the, the model version is the one which is most important. And then uh, since we will be working on sales invoice, I have also found uh, the latest uh, sales invoice, which is a little uh, higher. So it's sales invoice is here. Uh, it's also in the same model version, so that's important. And now how to get this configuration? Well, simply by clicking them, you get them downloaded. You see now it's already downloaded, it's been downloaded. So I have it now available for me to use. And in the same way, I would download also all other configurations. And once I have them downloaded, then I go into electronic reporting workspace. So electronic reporting workspace is, uh, okay, no, that's not, uh, sorry, workspaces are here. Okay, electronic workspace uh, does look like this. So here I have the configurations and also configurations provider. Microsoft configuration provider is there by default, but then if you want to derive and modify existing configurations, you need to create your own provider. So I have entered uh, the centric configuration provider and I have set it active. So uh, whenever I will be do any modifications, they will be placed in this configuration provider. Okay, and now I'll open the configurations. Here I have already downloaded uh, invoice models, mappings, and sales invoice. Uh, I have entered them from uh, XML files, which I have downloaded earlier. So it, I have just loaded them here. It's important that you load the model first and because it's the parent and the model mapping and sales uh, invoice format are the children. So they, they need to come next. I have also uh, downloaded uh, a simplified payment model just to explain you what the models are. So now we come to the point when we are explaining the configuration. The first configuration is the data model and let's see how a simple configuration looks like. Here in this forum, we have the possibility to open the designer. And when we open the designer, we then see this configuration. This is the data model configuration, a simple one. Here we see the properties on the right and on the left, we see the structure. So if I expand the structure, I see this is some sort of payment uh, structure, which contains uh, some messaging uh, identification, then creditor, debt or currency amount, transaction date and so on, a simple uh, model. And then I would uh, explain what these, um, uh, these parentheses and asterisk mean. This means that this is a reusable structure or, or referenced item. So uh, that means that you specify the structure somewhere else. You're just reusing it here. And if I click on go to referenced item, I would then jump to the place where this is actually uh, defined. So I have the party structure with account and with agent. And then I am referring to this here when I'm using creditor and when I'm using debtor. And the same thing for the account and the agent. If I go to referenced item, I jump down to the place where this is defined. This is very frequently used in configurations in order for us not to uh, repeat ourselves so that we simply make the structure once and then reuse it on other places. But you can nest it uh, as many levels as you want. And that creates quite a bit of uh, navigation on the model configuration, I mean, on this uh, data model configuration, if you want to find something. So this is very simple case. Now, if we open the invoice, you will see that that's completely different story. So invoice model really is huge and very complex. So you can see that, uh, you know, lots, lots, lots of content. And uh, if you would open parts of it, you would see that often you will see the referenced items. And when you go to, to them, you will see that there is further down all kinds of uh, references. And this way, it means it's quite difficult to understand the structure. It's quite difficult to navigate if you don't know your structure well. 
But anyways, um, eventually you learn. Uh, and if you are a functional consultant, you already know these uh, different data structures available and you'll be able to get around. Uh, okay. All right, now let's move on. Uh, we know the data model. Uh, see the model mapping. The model mapping basically, as we said, specifies which data sources provide data for our data model. Let's see how the designer looks here. Again, uh, since this is a quite complex uh, configuration, we have different types of mappings. For example, sales invoice mapping is the one that I'm interested in. Let's open it. And you see uh, here on the right, I see the data model. So this is the model which I have previously specified. And here on the right, I see all the data sources. And these data sources are the data sources available for the sales invoice. And each of them contains uh, their substructures, contains fields, relations. And uh, by using those, you can connect the data model with the data sources. We'll see that later, uh, how to do it on a derived model. So that was the model mapping configuration, which provides the data from the data sources. And the last one is the format. The format actually contains the attachments. And for example, in this case, the attachments uh, contain sales template in Excel, and we can even see the preview. So basically, this is the preview of our Excel. That's how our template looks like. And besides that, we also see the structure of this, of this template. As you can see, this structure is also quite uh, complex. We have the headers and invoice lines, back orders, and all these different things. For example, in the headers, we have company info, we have document details, where we see the customer details, uh, invoices, and all other information. And uh, as you can see, it is relatively, relatively complex. And uh, then we have the mapping. The mapping actually is mapping this structure in the format to the data format. And basically, this is the second uh, type of mapping, which fills the, the format configuration with the data from the data model. So it's very uh, relatively complex, but it's also very flexible. Practically, you can get any information from D365 FO in this way to any kind of document. So it is flexible, but uh, at the same time, it is quite complex. Okay, so now when we know how these configurations look like, let's see how we use them. Now, this has been imported, and uh, you see that configuration provider in all these cases is Microsoft. Uh, that means we cannot modify it, but we can use it. And the status of all this configuration is shared, which means you can freely use it in Differ 65 FO. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to replace the report format for sales invoice so that when I will print my sales invoice, it is going to use the one specified in electronic reporting format. So let me go in the form setup. So this will be the print management for customer invoice. And currently it is set to sales invoice report in, uh, that's the SSRS report. But I can see in report format that I also have got my sales invoice in Excel available. And now when I change that, it is ready to, to be used. And here I already have my invoices, so I'll just uh, refresh this to be sure that I get the latest state. And uh, I will now use print management to print it. And if everything works correctly, it is going to show the electronic reporting versions. Okay, this message popped up because I have set the debugging. I'm just going to say, no, I don't want to debug now. I just want to see the result. And the result is already downloaded here. You may not have noticed. The Excel file has been generated and downloaded. And as you can see, uh, this is the invoice that I have printed. And this was generated using electronic reporting configurations and electronic reporting template from the format. Okay, so this is how it works by default. And now 
we'll see how to modify modify it. That's the fun part. So what we want to do now is we will create a copy of each of these configurations and then we'll modify it. And let me go back to, to these templates. Okay, let's see which one is the last one. So that was the last one. Let's say that our requirement is that we want to add an information which is not available on this report. Uh, on this report, we don't see the customer group. Let's say that we want to include customer group on this report. So we will include it somewhere like here. And uh, we will go, we'll be using configurations and no code approach to bring this data in, which is not available in the standard report. So let's see what it needs to be done in order to achieve it. The first thing we'll create Actually, we will derive from the existing configuration. First, we will derive from the model. So I'll give it a name, my invoice model. And the configuration provider is by default the centric because that's the active one. Okay, so it has been derived. Status is draft, which means I can work on it, I can modify it. The centric provider, the centric is the provider. And now here I also have uh, some other settings, which I'm going to explain next. So when you are working your own modifications, it is always recommended that you turn these user parameters on. Use destinations for draft status. If you want, to use different destinations like screen, file, email for your draft uh, status configuration. So turn this to yes if you want that. Enable data debugging for formats. That's also uh, good because if, for example, you create configuration and you don't get the data in the final result, then you need to know is the configuration uh, executing correctly? Is the data there? And that's why you need this debugger. Running debug mode has to be to yes, so that you're able to start the debugger. And also run settings need to be set to yes, so that you can set that you can also run draft uh, status, uh, because otherwise you cannot uh, run configurations which have status of draft. So I set this on, and here the first thing I'm going to set is I'll say, okay, run draft. Okay, I have to edit the record to be able to change that and save it. So my invoice model is the one that I have created. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do now is I will add the missing field. So I'll go into designer. I know that the missing part is under the customer structure. So just find the customer. So, okay, I have to spell it right. So that's the first one. It's not, okay, so customer information is the one I'm looking for. And as you can see, there is no uh, customer group. So we will add it. So I will um, position myself on customer information and I will add a new, new child of an active node and it will be of type string and it will be called customer group name. This is what it's going to be called. Let's add it and hope that everything will be added correctly. Okay, it has been added. And basically this is all that we need to do. In this case, it's very simple requirement. Type string, one item, which was placed here under the customer information. Just save everything and we're done with the data model. Okay. Step two, we will derive from invoice model mapping. Same procedure, we will derive, we'll give it a name, my invoice model mapping. And now we have to pay attention to which target model we're going to select. We have to select our own because it contains additional field. So create configuration. It's now working, and once the configuration will be ready, 
we'll set some parameters. Okay. So here we'll say, okay, we want to run draft and this will be our default model mapping. We have to make sure that this one is not set as a default. Okay, so this is it. And we're go to we're now going to modify the mapping. Sales invoice, designer. And here on the right, we have our data model. And under customer, we have this customer group name, which we have added. And now we have to find the match in the data sources. So where do we have customer group name? We know that the sales invoice temp has got some information which can help us. So this basically contains the uh, head information for the invoice, the main information for the invoice. And here we don't see the customer group, but actually we can now rely on relations. So relations one uh, many to one will bring us to customer invoice journal. So we expand that one and the customer invoice journal contains a relation on again, many to one on a customer group. A customer group. Where is it? Okay, relations. Cust uh, customer group, here it is. And here I find the name. And basically this is what I want to use as the data for my data model. So all I have to do now is I have to bind this together. So the configurations the configuration knows now where to find the data. So it, it, it knows that it has to go into invoice TMP, go to the relation from journal to customer group and pick the name from there. So that's it. I have to save it now. And basically the model mapping is done. Okay, so we have that ready. We have run draft and default, that's good. And uh, in the next step, we will do the same thing with the format, with the Excel template. So this will be my sales, okay, I'll just write it together. My sales invoice, uh, Excel. Again, I have to make sure that I select correct model. Uh, version is still empty because I have them in draft. Data model definition is sales invoice and create configuration will create a copy. So basically this is the copy of the existing one. And here we're going to start uh, the modifications. So first, uh, what we're going to do is we need to modify the attachment. So let me open the attachment now uh, and I will download it. So this is the uh, downloaded version and this downloaded version now has to be modified. So what I would do here, I would uh, turn the grid lines on and the headings on so that I can work a little easier. And I would insert a new line here, or actually not here, not there, but, uh, but here, uh, and insert the, uh, the missing data, uh, the space for the missing data here. Now, let me explain you how the system works in the templates. As you can see, there are lots of named uh, ranges. And basically, when you select one of these named ranges, you will see what it contains. And these named ranges are also used in format configuration mapping uh, because this is the way how the format configuration knows into which cells or ranges certain data has to come. So you see that this is the document details. It contains all this range. And then individually, we see that here we have customer address value. And then for example, here we have labels and values. So everything is named. Now, I'm not going to modify this manually. I have already uh, prepared 
a template which I'm going to use now. And uh, this template is uh, the one here where I have already added the missing part and I have also marked it with a yellow highlight so that we will know and see in the generated template that it is uh, executing correctly. I have named this part now and basically this is what I need. And from here, I'm going to uh, go back into uh, my configuration and uh, I'll open the designer now. Now in the designer, what I'll first do is I will import from the Excel and I'll update the existing template. Uh, so existing template is the one, here. this is the one which I have prepared earlier. And uh, I'll click OK. And this one is going to substitute the one which is uh, there. OK, I'll save it. I'll close it for now. Okay, I'll close it. And now in the next step, I'm going to go into uh, my document manager. So this is business document management form. And here I can see this uh, template of mine. And if I scroll down, I should see that it contains that modified part which I was using. Okay, I'm going to edit it now. Now, uh, this document uh, management sometimes uh, behaves a little bit unpredictable. It's not always doing the th doing things you would expect, but let's hope that we're going to be okay now. Okay, I'm just going to enter some template version. Okay, this is what I meant. Actually, it should have opened the document, but it didn't. So I'll just have to repeat it again. Hopefully the second time it is, it'll be open. Okay, so this is my template, including the newly added cells. And now here I have the option to bring in the structure. So this is the structure that is actually used by this format. That's a little harder to expand this have to be very patient with this. So this is the structure. Let me expand it. And uh, where I'm interested is in document details. Uh, the, okay, in document details. And here I'm going to add new, new cell. So this is the cell which is going to be used in the format. So this is the cell L28. That's the one used for my data and I have to name it the same way as I have it named in Excel. Uh, this is now for the format uh, mapping. So document details, then underscore cast group name, underscore value. Okay, so this is what I'm going to name it. Let me see if I have spelled it correctly. It seems like I did, okay. Now it should have been added. Okay, it is added here. So let me click OK. Uh -huh, I said already done it. And uh, let's save it. Okay, let's let make sure that it's still here. It is. Save it. And now in the next step, I'm going to, to bind it. So find it again. Now I will bind it with the data model. So I click show bindings and this will pop up my data sources. And here I have, uh, sorry, that's not the right one. The model for customer should contain also the customer group name. And I'll bind these two now. Okay, bind them. So now they are bound. I click save and uh, they are saved. So this is all that uh, needs to be done, uh, done so far. I can now close this document because I have done what I wanted to do and I will publish it. I'll publish will get rid of all the other versions. 
Publish means it is all that the format is going to be uh, ready, completed, uh, and it, it is then able to be used. Okay, close here, go back. And uh, let's open the configuration once more. Oh, sorry, not here, but in the designer. So we should be able to see to see it here in the designer as well now. Okay, uh, header, document details. Let's scroll down and we should find our customer group somewhere. Okay, it's here. So it seems like everything is fine so far. Uh, that's all set. And uh, let's say that we can run it in a draft and save everything. Uh, okay, well, obviously this is now colliding somehow. So let's, uh, let's close this just to be sure we won't have problems. Refresh everything and hopefully this will solve it. Invoice model, sales. Okay, let's change it to run draft. Yes, and try to save it now. Okay, it's saved. Good, let's try our luck now. We're going to print management. We will refresh it so that we get the latest uh, document formats. And we'll try to set it for our newly designed uh, format configuration. Everything looks good so far. And now let's try and run it using print management. And now if we are born under lucky star, okay, this will say to no. Let's see what's going to happen now. And yes, we have our results here. So we have been successful. Now, if we were not successful, what are our options? Well, then we go debugging. So I'll just uh, try it once more. This time I'll do the debugging. I'll say yes, and the debugging windows, window opens, and here I am in the format. So I start with the format, but if the format doesn't give me data, I can also go and start with the model mapping. So try first with the format. Uh, what we have to do is every time we have to click get value. Okay, get value, and we get the first value. And then we come next and say, okay, get value, and we get this value, and so on. We scroll to the areas of the report where we are interested in and okay now we come to document details so document details get value and expand document details here and then we find our our field which is this one here and again we say get value and we see that the value is intercompany customers which is actually the value uh, for the customer group for this customer. So this way we're able to, to debug it. If we see the empty value here, then we would do the same thing also for the model mapping. So for the model mapping, again, we have to start in the uh, beginning and uh, do the same thing. Well, in this case, it's the sales invoice temp, read one record. It is a little bit different uh, system here. I have to uh, use relations already because I have been using relations. The customer invoice journal, okay. Read one record. And here I can see if it has actually been read. So everything good so far. And uh, invoice journal then needs relations on customer group. Okay, where are you? Uh, what did I do something wrong? I didn't expand relations. 
okay customer groups this one so get value here and let's read the record so customer group get value so we have the customer group 90 and also the description is get value intercompany customers so this way we can uh, we can do the debugging. This is something that was really quite helpful because in the early days of electronic reporting, you didn't have anything like this available. Uh, but yeah, uh, luckily now we have been able to do the configurations and in the remaining, I am going to show you about um, a little bit something about electronic reporting destinations. So electronic reporting destinations um, are not the same as the one we know from SSRS. Basically, how we do here is for each individual format, we need to specify its destination. So here I will say, okay, I want to have new destination for my sales invoice. I want to say new and I'll give it some name. Let's say screen uh, and PDF. And here I pick the component sales invoice. And here I'll set the settings. The settings are these that we have here. Okay, I could email, I could archive, file, screen. In my case, I'm just going to send it to screen. Click OK. And I also want to convert it to PDF and save everything together. So now when I have set it, I can go, oops, I can go and uh, click printing again. And if everything has been done correctly, we should see the result on the screen. So let's hope. Okay, no debugging. Yes, this is it. So it has been converted to PDF. It has been sent to screen. So practically our demo today was a success, which I'm quite happy because this is not something that's for granted. But anyway, this is what we have done. Uh, let me wrap up quickly, uh, just going back to, to slides. So thank you again for watching. I hope that you will also vote for my session. I'm quite uh, happy to be able to present here on this great conference. This is actually my first time. So I hope that uh, I have presented something useful. Again, electronic reporting is quite difficult. Uh, it's not an easy technology. It takes quite time, it takes lots of time actually, and takes good nerves. But at the end, you can get the result. And Microsoft is making uh, progress. Just uh, recently, I think that in the version 10.21, uh, and by the way, uh, I'm running this uh, demo on 10.0.21, version of DIFRA 65 fo so it's a pre-release version. Uh, it also contains some improvements in uh, emailing. You also have some questions for me, which I will be happy to answer in the Q&A session. Uh, your questions? There are some questions here, and I'll ask my moderator here to help uh, reading them out. Hi, hello, everybody. My name is Jerne, and I'll assist Albin with the Q&A session. I'll just read the questions that came in so far um, uh, by Will Fossey. He's asking if you update one of electronic files and then Microsoft updates it to a new version, do you need to make your changes again in the new version? Yeah, well, this is a very good question. And uh, luckily, uh, Microsoft uh, do the, does the changes so that they don't break anything um, that has been done earlier. So typically, if you have a configuration which works, then you don't have to upgrade it. But if you, for some reason, want to be uh, updated with the latest additions, then you can actually do what is called rebase. So in your configuration, you can rebase the configuration to the latest one available or to the, the one which you're still compatible with. Uh, namely, some configurations mm -hmm. require certain versions of DIFRA 65 FO. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be able to get the latest configuration if you are on some earlier version of DIFRA 65 FO. Basically, that's it. Normally, you don't have to do anything, but if you want, you can rebase. Okay, next by Jacob Fredlocke. 
can you use the ER for standard invoice documents so a developer wouldn't need to, to do any changes in reports? Uh, actually, yes, you can. Um, but of course, you'll have to do these changes in configurations by yourself. You don't need a developer, theoretically not. Uh, but if you'll get stuck with configuration, which may happen, then sometimes you'll have to ask developer for help so that they will debug the code for you and see where you actually uh, have something going wrong. The next one by Steve, if the underlying tables change outside of the model, does the model mapping in ER need to be changed to match it? Well, it depends who did the change. If Microsoft did the change in the table, in that case, probably they'll include it in the next configuration. But if you did the change, uh, then you will have to uh, modify the configuration manually. There is no, nothing you can do that would automatically modify that. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Will Fossey, um, do you have any recommendations around making changes but not negatively impacting the performance? I would expect too many changes uh, to slow it down. Okay, uh, sorry about that. We have some network issues. Anyway, about the performance, uh, we didn't really notice some severe performance impact. Uh, so you can just do whatever changes you need. And uh, then we have another question. Um, what if you need to insert a new column in Excel format document? This usually breaks the document. Do you have any recommendations there? Uh, well, uh, you should do the same thing as I done it in the session. Uh, basically, you have to uh, edit Excel template manually, edit into configuration, and then use document management, uh, business document management to uh, sort of do the binding with Excel template. And basically, that's it.